Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today for this tutorial. If you are new to oil painting, I suggest watching my Basics of Oil Painting video where I explain everything you need to know to start oil painting. Today's video is meant to serve as an example on how to proceed with painting an eye. There are endless possibilities out there with many different eye colors and skin tones and lighting variations, so don't take this as the only or best way to do it. I wouldn't even suggest trying to copy exactly how I do it. You will learn a lot more by figuring it out on your own and experimenting, but feel free to use it as a reference point. I also have 30 minute videos of my color mixing and real time painting process available to my website members at linadanya.com. And I'm having a studio sale in my art store so the paint painting I'm creating in this video will be available there. The colors I'm working with today are Titanium White, Hansa Yellow Light, Yellow Ochre, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red Medium, Burnt Sienna, Raw Umber, Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue Hue, and Sap Green. These are also the basic starting palette colors that I mentioned in my oil painting basics video, so I highly suggest you watch that. I'm using Gamzol to thin the paint and I'm also going to use Galkid with a little bit of Gamzol added and mixed into it as our medium. I'm going to leave links in the description for the products I'm working with. I start by diluting raw umber with a bunch of Gamzol to create the underpainting. It feels a lot like watercolor when you do it this way, and because it's such a thin diluted layer, it will dry quickly and absorb into the gesso panel. So when we paint over this later with color, it won't mess up the colors. Creating an underpainting is like making the skeleton of the painting. It establishes the basic shapes and values and it gives you somewhere to start with when you're about to place color, so you're not just lost. I'm working with a reference photo that I took to achieve maximum accuracy and realism. I strongly suggest you use references for your own art as well. Once that's done, I start mixing the skin tones for the eye and adding my Galkin mixture to those colors. I'm going to be adding the medium mixture into my colors as I'm painting to improve the flow of the paint and also speed up the drying time. The colors I'm mixing are the shades of the highlights and shadows on the skin. So I'm using titanium white with some yellow ochre. I'm leaving some of that color on the brush and then bringing some burnt sienna for the mid-tone and some cadmium red and raw umber with alizarin crimson for the darker shadows of the eye. I'm adding titanium white for a much lighter skin highlight. The camera died at the start, I do apologize for that, but you can pretty much see what colors are where. The far left color is on the lighter part of the lid, and the warm shadow tone to the right of the palette is on the shadowy parts of the eye. And basically I just bring in these colors where I see fit. When you're working with a reference photo, it's easy to just zoom in and be able to tell which colors are where. There's a bit more of a pink to the inner and outer corners of the eye, so I brought in some alizarin crimson with a teeny bit of cadmium red for that, and a bit of burnt sienna. For the lower lash line, I used the lightest skin tone I mixed, and I basically just painted that line underneath the cornea. Speaking of the cornea, a common mistake people make when learning how to paint eyes is they paint the cornea, the whites of the eyes, with just plain white. This is fine if you're trying to paint a cartoon character or a scary robot, but this is not the aesthetic we're going for here. So if you observe your eye in the mirror, you'll see that the cornea is not exactly pure white. It's got veins and shadows. These tones can have reds, yellows, grays, blues, purples, greens, whatever. It really depends on the lighting and the eye itself. So. For the left part of the eye, which is more shadowy than the right, the color I'm mixing is titanium white with a skin tone mix I created earlier of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. Then I add sap green and cerulean blue hue and I just play with that tone until it looks like what I need it to. For the left part of the white in the eye, which is on the side of the light source, so it'll be a bit lighter, I'm adding titanium white, cerulean blue hue, ultramarine blue, and some Galkid, and then paint the other side. I also gently blend that cornea color with the colors I placed in the corner of the eye. And to create the deeper fold in the eyelid, I mixed Mars Black with Burnt Sienna and Alizarin Crimson. 
Then taking that same color I just created, I added some cadmium red and this is the crease fading out to the less shadowy parts of the eye heading closer to the light source which illuminates the skin from the side and gives it a red tone. Next it's time to paint the iris and I'm mixing a few colors here. Um, cerulean blue hue, titanium white, sap green. Then I mix Mars black with sap green and ultramarine blue. This darker color will be for the upper shadowy parts of the eye and the outer ring which has a bit more green in it. So I take that same color, add in some sap green, cerulean blue hue, and I use that same color again, but this time I'm adding some yellow ochre, Hansa yellow light, and burnt sienna for the part that's closest to the pupil, which is gonna have some more warm colors in them. And then I begin gradually filling in the iris with the colors I created. I used Mars Black on the pupil which makes the eye seem much more alive and the colors around the pupil have a more yellow, burnt sienna and greenish color. Another thing people forget is to blend the limbal ring with the cornea. Very rarely is it just a sharp circle. Actually it's never just a sharp circle unless you're wearing really cheap bad quality contact lenses. And of course that's going to make us look like a creepy doll or a scary robot. So in order to make it look natural, um, you have to fade that limbal ring into the cornea ever so slightly. So I added some of that cornea mixture I created later, that is such a weird thing to say, cornea mixture, um, with the iris colors I created with the bluish green, and then very gently dabbed it over with a dry brush. I also blended the burnt sienna alizarin crimson color I used in the upper lash line with the dry brush to just give it a little bit more of a soft appearance. And I gradually just continue working out the details of the iris and skin tones as I see fit, building up the shadows of the eye and highlights. The key to making things realistic is noticing the soft and subtle gradients in the transitions of different colors, such as the red underneath the shadows of the crease of the eye and the soft grayish bluish green fading into the cornea. The further you go into a painting, the more you can see what else needs to be added. Next, I added the light reflection on the iris, which is just a circle since my light source was a lamp. I also added very subtle eyelash reflections in that light. So my camera clearly hates me and I'm going to sketch a little eye scribble for you in my sketchbook. This is literally taking me like no time at all. Um, I just want to show you guys how I drew those eyelashes since I couldn't film it. So you're gonna have like a little bit of a direction to go from. Anyway, since the eye is like a rounded shape, you basically just um, draw the ones facing the inner eye facing in that direction and the ones in the outer eye facing in that direction. 
and the ones that are right above the iris tend to point more upwards. So it looks something like this and they gradually like wrap around the eye and it just gives the illusion. They're, they're also not perfect, you know, it's good to have them like overlapping each other sometimes. Um, you never want to have just like perfect lines, they always have like a very slight curve to them. So yeah, that's pretty much how I painted those eyelashes. Um, sorry again that my camera died, it hates me, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an example. I caught the final glimpse of eyelash painting as you can see. Uh, for the eyelashes I used Mars Black mixed in with some ultramarine blue, sap green, and alizarin crimson. This gave it a more subtle, softer appearance as opposed to using black just straight out of the tube which would have given it a plastered look. I also made the lashes a bit lighter on the ends. Underneath lashes, I have a subtle line painted with burnt sienna, alizarin, crimson, and cadmium red, which gives it the illusion of thickness to the lid. Well, that is it for this tutorial. I hope it was a little helpful to you guys. Let me know what else you would like to see a tutorial for. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!